All right, so today we're going to go over the male reproductive system. So before you start, make sure you have some paper and um, a pencil so you can jot these notes down. So for each uh, slide, I want you just to write down the word and the definition. I will just be kind of talk, talking a little bit about um, the various organs, which you do not have to write down. Just write down the definition and the word. Here we go. So starting with the male reproductive system, um, first we're going to we're going to talk about are the male sex cells called the sperm. Um, the sperm are produced in the testes as soon as a boy starts puberty, around 13, 14 years old, about average. And once their testes start making sperm, they make millions and millions of sperm every single day. So the sperm, um, they are about one six hundredth of an inch long, so they're very, very tiny. This picture you're, you see here is an actual uh, picture underneath a microscope of some sperm, and the one in the middle there is, is trying to fertilize a female egg, which we'll learn about um, the next lesson. So now we're moving on to the testes. So males have two testes. Sometimes we call them testicles. Um, either one is okay. So, like I said earlier, the testes are um, responsible for making the sperm. Like I said, once a boy hits puberty, millions and millions and millions of sperm are produced every single day until the day he dies. So they never stop working, the testicles. Moving on to the epididymis. So you can see the epididymis, they're, they're a set of tubes they sit right on top of the um, testicles and after the sperm are made in the um, testes they travel to these this organ called the epididymis everybody say that epididymis um here they stay here for about four to six weeks where they mature um, they learn where they need to do, go and what their job is um, and once they are mature they move into long tubes called the vas deferens. And here the tubes travel, sorry, the sperm travel through these vas deferens um, to get to where they need to go. It takes about five or six days for the sperm to travel through these vas deferens. And during, there's, there's three organs in the male reproductive system that make semen. Um, which is a white liquid, as you can see, emitted from the urethra during ejaculation. The semen, semen is made up of sperm, mucus, amino acids, and fructose. The first gland um, that makes semen is called the seminal vesicle. You can see on the diagram, it kind of looks like a peace sign. Um, these, these two organs produce uh, sperm along with The prostate gland, this is another gland that produces semen. And the third gland that makes semen is called the Cooper's gland. It's a very, very tiny organ. So locate that on the diagram there. All right, so those are the three organs that make this white fluid that help the sperm swim in. Now, once the semen, sperm, are ready to leave the male's body, <clears throat> they will go through a tube called the urethra. Everybody say that, urethra. Um, this carries both urine and semen out of the body through the penis. So locate the urethra on the diagram. So both um, fluids go out the same tube through the male's penis, the urethra. All right, now we have the main external reproductive organ called the penis. And the penis is, you don't have to write these two words, but the main part of the penis is called the shaft, and the tip of the penis is called the gland, sometimes called the head. Um, there are no bones in the penis. It's made of spongy tissue, lots of blood vessels, so there's no bones in the penis. Everybody say that. 
So when all baby boys are born, they are born with um, something called a foreskin. And this is just simply a fold of skin that covers the tip of the penis. Um, like I said, all baby boys are born with this. Some families choose to have this foreskin removed, and that's a little minor surgery called, the circumc called a circumcision. And this is usually done a few days after birth. The next slide I'm going to show you is just a, um, a diagram of the difference between a circumcised penis and an uncircumcised penis. So you can see here what they look like, and there's really no difference in how they work. Um, the only thing is with males who have uncircumcised penises, they need to take extra special care, good hygiene, because bacteria can kind of grow and develop underneath that foreskin and cause a, a slight infection. That's the only difference besides they look a little bit different. All right, now we have the scrotum, scrotum, the sac that holds the testicles. So the sac is um, just basically what, that's what it is, a sac of skin. Um, it not only holds the testes, it regulates the temperature of the testes. So for, in order for testes to efficiently make sperm, they need to be about six degrees cooler than the, the body temperature. Um, so that's what they do when, um, for, for example, if a male is jumps into a swimming pool or something, it's really and it's really cold. The scrotum shrinks so the testes get really close to the body to regulate the temperature, keep them warm. And on the other hand, when a male's really kind of sweaty and hot, the scrotum becomes loose and floppy and hangs away from the body to keep um, the testes cooler, so they can produce sperm efficiently. So that's the scrotum, very amazing sack of skin. All right, now erection. This is a condition in which the tissue in the penis fills up with blood and the penis becomes hard and firm and stands away from the body. Um, so when a male is sexually aroused or sometimes for no reason at all, um, this will happen. During um, puberty years, this is a little uncomfortable, so just bear with me here. Um, males will sometimes have what we call spontaneous erections. Um, because of all the testosterone and hormones coursing through the body at this time of life, sometimes a male will just be sitting in his math class working on a problem one times five, whoop, he might experience an erection. It's very common and normal for this to happen. So boys, if it's happening to you, just know it's normal. It happens to everybody sooner or later. Um, just think about something else. Nobody's looking. Nobody needs to know. And it will go away real quickly. Now, when, uh, like I said earlier, when the sperm leaves the male body through the, through the um, urethra, this is called ejaculation. And it forcefully leaves the penis, the, the sperm and the semen do called ejaculation. All right, last word for the day is the primary male sex hormone, and this is called testosterone. This hormone is responsible for all the changes a male goes through during puberty and all the other sexual feelings and um, changes happening called testosterone. All right, so that was a very quick um, review of the male reproductive system. I probably went too fast, so luckily you can pause and, and write what you need to. Um, when you're all done, just take a quick look at this, this Travels of the Sperm. It's an animation type of video. It's only about a minute long, so watch that just kind of as a review. Um, and then you can also, as a review, just you can um, either print out the copy that I'd have uploaded for you, or you can just go through these. In fact, let's go through them together right now. So number one is pointing to the long tubes that the sperm travel through. That's called the vas deferens. Uh, number two is, is the one, one of the organs that makes semen called the seminal vesicles. Number three is not really part of the feet uh, or the reproductive system, but it's part of the urinary digestive system, and that's the bladder. I just included it because it's kind of down mixed in with all the other reproductive organs.
Um, number four is another organ that makes semen. It's called the prostate gland. Number five is the cowpers, also glands that make semen. Number six is the epididymis. That's where the sperm go to mature for about four to six weeks. Um, number seven is the main organ, um, penis. Number eight is pointing to the testes. Number nine, the scrotum. And ten is the urethra. So we will be having a, a diagram test at the end of the at the end of this unit. So keep this handy, keep this diagram handy. We'll review it every once in a while. Just keeps it fresh in your mind. And then um, let's just quick review these. So the sac of skin is called the you're right, scrotum. Number two, the male sex cells are called right on, very good, called the sperm. The blank are organs that make sperm and testosterone. Wait for it, what do you think it is? Bingo, it's the testes. And last but not least, the primary male sex, por sex hormone is called the right on, testosterone. All right, that is it for today. You're going to stop here. Um, the next lesson will be on the female reproductive system. All right, so now I want you to go and take the assessment, just a few questions, kind of like these here, um, just so I know that you have um, went through this, this PowerPoint and uh, kind of a check-in. So I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day. Bye.